In the previous lecture, we learned about this concept of a maneuver margin, which is um, the distance that the maneuver points, it's aft of the CG, divided by the mean chord of the main wing. So that's the uh, definition of the maneuver margin, and we found that it was related to the neutral point uh, minus some quantity that is always negative. So it always sits behind the, uh, so meaning that the maneuver point always sits behind the neutral point, okay? And uh, so the maneuver margin is always greater than the static margin. This is the definition of the static margin here. Okay, so um, we're now going to take that one step further. And I really like this, uh, this lecture about the dynamic margin. This is actually something that was not fully understood uh, until 2009, uh, a paper by Phillips and Niewoner about uh, longitudinal dynamics. And... Uh, and uh, so in this paper, they brought together some really important concepts that are not well understood in the, uh, in the world of aeronautics. And uh, so anyway, I think this is a really important topic here. I'll put a link to that paper. Uh, obviously, in Phillips's book, he also outlines this. But um, one thing that I really like about this whole thing is, is the fact that uh, there are little gold nuggets left to discover in this world of aeronautical engineering and under, better understanding aircraft dynamics and uh, and aerodynamics and um, anyway there there are really fun things left to discover still although we've been studying this for you know over a hundred years now so um, this is one of those gold nuggets and uh, anyway I, I hope that this brings some things together in your mind so let's look at this equation here um, you might have noticed that we are carrying around these terms here, this g c bar w over 2v squared. So it seems a little clunky, right? So usually uh, we like to have uh, ratios that come out of these dimensionless parameters that are uh, kind of simplify the equations. But here we've been carrying around these parameters here. Well, it turns out that the reason we're carrying those around is, is partially due to the fact that we have chosen the mean chord of the main wing to non-dimensionalize the pitching moment right here, and uh, and we've used uh, the gravity and the velocity and C bar actually to non-dimensionalize Q bar, okay? So those were uh, decisions that were made um, early on and, and uh, have become kind of standard throughout, um, throughout the aeronautical industry. So uh, for example, here, this Q bar, the definition of that is, is uh, oops, it's Q, times c bar w over 2v. Okay, so that's just convention. Well, we're going to introduce a new, um, uh, a new dimensionless uh, pitch rate, which uh, Phillips calls the dynamic pitch rate. Okay, so the dynamic pitch rate is, uh, is something new here. And uh, the way he defines this is... Uh, Q, and we're going to put kind of this uh, this uh, scoop or bowl uh, above that to show that it's not a bar. It's a little bit different. The definition is a little bit different than the traditional Q bar. And uh, that is defined as V times Q over G. Okay, so uh, in the numerator here, we have velocity times pitch rate, which is actually the centripetal acceleration. Okay, and in the denominator, we have gravitational acceleration. Okay, so this is a ratio of the centripetal acceleration to the gravitational acceleration, uh, which makes sense. That would be a, an interesting dimensionless parameter that probably has to do with the dynamics of of an, of an aircraft, right? The motion of an aircraft, this ratio of centripetal acceleration to gravitational acceleration. So it's a natural dimensionless value here. Now, if you have a Q bar, you can get Q uh, upside down hat here uh, by multiplying it by two V squared over G C bar W. So multiply that by Q bar and that will give you this new uh, dynamic pitch rate. Okay, so we're going to talk about things in terms of this dynamic pitch rate instead of the traditional uh, Q bar. Okay, uh, the next step then is also to look at the 
uh, definition of the static margin, which is LNP over C bar W. Uh, we're going to swap that out and go back to minus CM alpha over CL alpha, okay? So let's use both of these definitions now uh, in this equation here and multiple, or multiply through by uh, C bar W, and we're going to get LMP is equal to minus C bar W times CM alpha over CL alpha minus C bar W times CM Q, uh, the dynamic pitch rate, uh, Q scoop. I don't know really what to call that upside down thing, so I'll just call it Q scoop. Uh, times CW minus CL Q scoop, okay? And uh, we can take that a step further and put that in dimensional form. Notice that we have these C bar Ws hanging around uh, only in places where they're multiplied by the pitching moment. And that's because when we non-dimensionalize the pitching moment, we used C bar W. Well, it turns out that C bar W doesn't affect the... Uh, the dynamics of this aircraft. They're really independent of that. That was just a convention that was chosen early on to non-dimensionalize the pitching moment. But, uh, but it turns out the dynamics are not related to that. And so that would just fall out of the equation. You can see you just multiply that through and that would disappear. So let's write this in dimensional form where we've multiplied that out as well as the dynamic pressure and the wing area. Uh, and so what we get is minus m comma alpha. So the dimensional, the change in uh, pitching moment with respect to alpha divided by the change in lift with respect to alpha minus uh, the change in pitching moment with respect to Q scoop over uh, W minus the change in lift uh, with respect to Q scoop. Okay, now in the previous video, I think it was, uh, I mentioned that uh, this term here is much smaller than the weight, or in coefficient terms, a CL comma Q bar was much smaller than the weight coefficient, uh, and that's still true. So we're just going to drop that term, okay? We're just going to uh, say that, uh, that LQ is much less than the weight of the aircraft, okay? So this is the change in lift with, with uh, dynamic pitch rate which you can imagine is much less than the weight of the aircraft. So uh, when, we, uh, when we plug that in, then that term just uh, disappears there. And so what we're left with is minus m comma alpha over l comma alpha minus m comma q scoop over w, okay? All right, so, uh, so this is our new um, uh, estimate or just a different way to write this uh, this LMP, which is the distance that that maneuver point is aft of the center of gravity. All right, uh, so that's one piece of the puzzle here. Now let's uh, step back to our handling quality study. So uh, from the handling quality study, one important thing we learned uh, from that was this definition of the cap. This is a control anticipation parameter. And we found that there were limits on the cap uh, in order for aircraft to have good handling qualities, they had to be within certain limits. Well, that cap is defined as the uh, natural frequency of the short period squared divided by CL alpha over CW, okay? So um, uh, that should look familiar to you. If not, then you should go back and uh, review the handling qualities section where we learned about the control anticipation parameter uh, also known as the cap. Okay, so um, so we know that there are limits on, on this particular parameter, and uh, let's dissect this and look at the, uh, the natural frequency of the short period. Now, um, also previously, we've looked at closed form solutions for the uh, damped natural frequency yeah, the damped natural frequency of the short period. We have closed form solutions for that. We also have closed form solutions for the eigenvalues of the short period. So these are estimates for the short period, you know, after we drop uh, terms that are usually small compared to others and uh, make some other approximations, we're able to come up with this closed form solution. So again, you can go back and review that. Uh, but we never actually talked about the closed form solution for the undamped natural frequency of the short period. So we did the damped natural frequency, but this is the undamped natural frequency of the short period. And uh, the definition of that is the square root of lambda 1 times lambda 2. That's the, the uh, undamped natural frequency. But we did 
come up with closed form solutions for lambda 1 and lambda 2, or the eigenvalues of that uh, mode, okay? So I'm not going to work through the math, but um, but if you use this uh, th this closed form solution or approximation for the natural frequency of the short period, you can write this as uh, minus L alpha over W times M comma Q over I y y b times g over v naught minus m alpha over i y y b okay so this was the this is a closed form solution for the natural frequency of the short period and uh, it turns out that uh, uh, you may notice that there are a lot of parameters in here that are very similar to parameters that are left in this uh, closed form solution for the maneuver point. And so, in fact, you can plug in this definition of the maneuver point, and uh, what we'll get there is that uh, the natural frequency is the square root of g times LMP, the maneuver point, times L comma alpha over uh, R Y Y B squared times the weight. Now R Y Y B um, is called the pitch radius of gyration. Okay, that's uh, defined as the square root of G times the moment of inertia about the pitch axis. That's the I Y Y B divided by W. Okay, so this is the pitch radius of gyration. Okay, so it has something to do with the inertia about the pitch axis, or axis, right? Okay, so um, so this is our new uh, expression for omega n s p. And now uh, we can take that closed form solution, which is related to the maneuver point. You can just uh, you plug this into here and, and rearrange, and you get this equation here where we have this maneuver point. Uh, now uh, the cap is dependent on this guy squared, divided by uh, CL alpha over CW. So it turns out if you square this, uh, you turn, you find that uh, you have G LMP over RYY squared times L alpha over W, which you can put in terms of coefficients. You can t divide the top and the bottom by the dynamic pressure in the area, the wing area, and put those two into coefficients. And it turns out that that just perfectly cancels with this relationship here. So... Uh, so the reason that they found that uh, they had to divide this out, basically, is because that term is in the uh, the natural frequency of the short period. And so that had to be divided out. And actually, uh, once you plug all of this in, the cap can simply be rewritten uh, in terms of the maneuver point, which is G L M P over R Y Y B squared. So, so... Uh, here, uh, you know, history shows us that, that the handling qualities depend on the, the natural frequency of the short period divided by uh, this. Uh, this was called the acceleration sensitivity, right? Um, but uh, actually, both of these combine to just be a function of the maneuver point, uh, LMP. Okay, so what Philip says after he goes through this, uh, he then says, I'm going to define a new dimensionless ratio. And you can see from this equation here um, that uh, we've got a length here, and this is also a length. So we've got a maneuver point, that's a length. And the RYY is the pitch radius of gyration, that's also a length. So he defines this new dimensionless ratio that's called the dynamic margin. And uh, he defines it as L M P over R Y Y B. Okay, so that's the definition of the dynamic margin, and uh, and so we can actually go back up to this equation here and divide through this equation L M P, and in terms of this right here, uh, we can divide that by this R Y Y B uh, to come up with an expression for that. So that's equal to minus C M alpha. And this M now is going to have a scoop on it. I'll show you why in just a second. Divided by CL alpha minus CM scoop Q scoop 
over C W. And uh, that uh, the pitching moment, as I discussed before, the pitching moment in this equation was always multiplied by the C bar, or excuse me, the pitching moment coefficient was always multiplied by C bar W because it doesn't depend on C bar W. It, it was multiplied here because that the pitching moment had had used the C bar W for non-dimensionalization. So it's in the denominator of this term here. So once you multiply that through, uh, we can write it in dimensional form here. And and uh, what he's saying is uh, the, real, uh, the real characteristic length in pitch that we should have been concerned about, rather than the, the mean chord of the main wing, uh, the real characteristic length is the pitch radius of gyration. So this is the important length that we should be using to non-dimensionalize our, our pitching properties by. And so he defines a new pitching moment. Uh, this is called the dynamic moment coefficient, is what he calls it. And uh, that is simply the moment divided by 1 half rho v squared sw times ryyb. Okay, so using a different characteristic length here than uh, than we would usually, which was the C bar wing. Now we're gonna use the pitch radius of gyration. And because we're using that, uh, we have a different, slightly different definition for this dimensionless pitching moment, uh, which again, he calls the dynamic moment coefficient, okay? So it's the change in that moment coefficient with respect to alpha, the change in that moment coefficient with respect to Q scoop, which uh, again, is a different way of non-dimensionalizing uh, our pitch rate, um, and this is the dynamic pitch rate, okay? So once you plug that in, actually this equation uh, becomes really quite simple, and, um, and uh, so this is the definition of the dynamic margin, and you can see that it has a term that looks like the static margin, uh, and then a new term here as well. So this term is very similar to the static margin, but it's been non-dimensionalized slightly differently, right? Uh, so this is a little different than the static margin, um, but what it what it shows here is that the dynamic margin depends on pitch stability and pitch damping. There are these two terms. One is uh, the pitch stability. The other one is related to the pitch damping. So, uh, so usually we think of static stability. You know, the requirement for that is the static margin that it should be at five percent or whatnot, uh, and and that still shows up in here. But what this shows is that. Uh, what's more important is actually the dynamic margin. That's what all of the the uh, the uh, pilot opinion tests uh, showed us was that it really depended on the cap, which we can write here in terms of the dynamic margin. And so um, and that so those uh, that dynamic margin includes both stability, pitch stability, and pitch damping. So if we have sufficient pitch damping, we can give up some pitch stability. That's what that's telling us. If the if the aircraft, the pitch damping again is the is how quickly an aircraft can uh, can depart, um, you know, and it's related to this radius of gyration. If you have a lot of uh, a lot of mass about the pitch axis, then it's going to take it a long time to rotate about the pitch axis and basically slow down the effects of uh, disturbances in pitch. Um, and so that's okay uh, as long if you have a lot of pitch damping, you can give up some pitch stability. Uh, you know, and still have a, a, a good dynamic margin. So, so you got to pay attention to both the stability and the damping. Well, from all of these experiments here, we actually have hard limits on the cap. We know exactly uh, what the numbers need to be in order for us to have level one, level two, or level three handling qualities. Okay, so we can actually put a limit on this uh, dynamic margin. We know that that has to be greater than equal, greater than or equal to uh, something that he calls Q dot C over G over R Y Y B. Okay, so uh, basically all that's been done here is we we solve for LMP over R Y. We used one of those R Ys to non-dimensionalize this LMP. What was left was a G over R Y V, and then we have some limits uh, on the other on the other side of this equation. You know, this has to be. Uh, greater than or less than or equal to um, certain values. And again, you can go back to the handling qualities discussion to uh, to understand the limits on the cap. But anyway, we can now take these limits and put them in terms of this Q dot C instead. And so um, if you take the limits on cap and now apply them to the dynamic margin, 
uh, what we find is that um, uh, that the dynamic margin needs to be greater than or equal to q dot c over g r y y b, um, where q dot c is equal to uh, zero point two eight for maneuvers. These are actually category A maneuvers. Uh, which are maneuvers that require that are rapid uh, and precise. Uh, I'm just kind of shortening the definitions there, but basically they're rapid and precise maneuvers. Uh, Q dot C is equal to a 0 0.16. Now Phillips uses 0.15 here, but if you go back to the actual 8785 handling qualities paper of uh, published where where this data comes from. I'm pretty sure that's a 0.16. For some reason in his book, and I believe in the in his journal article on this, he also uses 0.15. So anyway, I'm using 0.16 again. Uh, I guess that's debatable. He uses a 0.15, and maybe he has another source for that than that other paper. But anyway, these are for uh, category uh, C maneuvers actually that are. Uh, uh, that are gradual and precise uh, or accurate, I think is the real word that they use there. And then uh, Q dot C is equal to uh, 0 0.085 for uh, category B um, maneuvers, which are uh, gradual and uh, not precise. Okay, so gradual, not pre precise. That's like a, like a climb, or a cruise, or descend. You know where you have some room for error, and it's kind of a gradual maneuver. So anyway, these are the three limits uh, that then are are used here to estimate the dynamic margin. Or or first, you have to compute your dynamic margin and make sure that they are within the. Uh, these three limits here. Uh, so your dynamic margin needs to be greater than or equal to uh, these values here to have level one handling qualities. I've only shown level one here. Of course, there are slightly different limits for uh, for level two and level three. Okay, so anyway, just uh, as a summary, um, a, a lot of times in aircraft design, we hear about the static margin, which is important. You know what the static margin tells us something about the stability of the aircraft. But all of the handling quality information that we have on uh, from years of tests um, uh, point towards this idea of a dynamic margin. Actually, it's not the static margin that matters as much as the dynamic margin. The dynamic margin, again, includes something akin to the static margin here uh, that, that uh, has pitch stability in it, but it also includes pitch damping. And you have to pay attention to both of these in order to correctly estimate your dynamic margin. So finally, uh, I guess I just want to uh, encourage students out there who have taken this class and, um, and others who might watch this video, um, you know, there's a lot of exciting things that are still left to discover about uh, the dynamics of aircraft. And, um, and I encourage you to spend time in the math. You know, there are new things like this gold nugget of the dynamic margin that can be pulled out of, of uh the historical literature on on these things if you dig into the math and understand it and uh and can make reasonable approximations you know things like this where we can say that one term is much larger than the other or whatnot and kind of kind of um even test history uh or historical perspectives just a little bit you know the the fact that we always non-dimensionalize uh q this way you know that's just convention uh, it turns out that this this non-dimensional form here really has nothing to do with the dynamics of the aircraft, and this non-dimensional form makes a whole lot more sense when you're looking at the dynamics of the aircraft. But some of these decisions were made early on and uh, and just kind of perpetuated through traditionally in the literature, and uh, there may be better ways to look at the dynamics of aircraft if we take a fresh perspective and go back to the fundamentals and dig through the math a little bit, um, there's a lot that we can still learn. So hopefully that was helpful to you, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you another time. Thanks.